Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Property Finder webinar, where we share our data as well as invite guests from the industry to help you navigate through the COVID-19 situation. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lynetta Bond, and I'm the Director of Research and Data at Property Finder, and also the Business Unit Owner of Data Finder. Like the previous weeks, we will continue to shape the UAE real estate market and help your businesses. In case this is your first time here, let me share what we're doing in this webinar. We at Property Finder want to be your best partners during this time and in the future. This is important for us because we as a company do well only if your business does well. Like previous weeks, we want to give you more visibility into what's happening in the market through our data and also help you transact more through insights by using our unique data set provided by our amazing data scientists. We will continue to share our data and insights with you today. Every week, we're taking your feedback into consideration, so our flow today will reflect what you told us in our last webinar. You told us you want to continue to hear from external experts, so we have more for you this week. Like the previous weeks, we will also share our unique data. We will then have an external guest, Dr. Michael Waters, who will share insights on the current real estate market and trends. Also joining us today is Alistair Sheriffs, our VP of Growth, who will share with you the trends and patterns of consumer demand on the Property Finder website over the last few months. This is super exciting data-wise. We will then have a mortgage mar market update by Ian Vaughn, Senior Mortgage Consultant at Mortgage Finder. At the end, there will be a possibility to post questions. Some will be answered directly in the chat, others during the Q&A at the end of the presentation. And as always, after the webinar, we'll send you an email to get your feedback. With that, let me introduce your host today. Next slide, please. Together with me, like previous weeks, we also have my colleague, Stuart Shapley, Director of New Homes, and there are more team members behind the scenes, so we have a smooth experience today. Next slide, please. As for your suggestions and feedback, we have three guests this week. Dr. Michael Waters, who's the Associate Professor in Real Estate at Harriet Watt University in Dubai, Alistair Sheriffs, our VP of Growth at Property Finder, and Ian Vaughn, Senior Mortgage Consultant at Mortgage Finder. We're very excited to have them with us this week. Now let's quickly dive into the survey results from the last webinar. Next slide, please. Every week we ask you if you are happy with the content of the webinar. According to the survey and the increasing number of participants every single week, it looks like you are. That's why we are here again today. On the left side, I share how you graded us. 100% of you thought the webinar met or exceeded their expectations. 100% of you enjoyed the variety of, of speakers. And 100% rated Property Finder efforts to be your best partner as good or above. Wow, guys, thank you for these ratings. We at Property Finder are working very hard to earn your trust. On the right side, we asked again your view on the time to market recovery. It's almost 50-50 between those of you who think the market will recover in less than six months and those of you who think it will take more than six months. However, a higher proportion of you think that the market will, re will recover in more than 12 months. As we said before, the most difficult part of the situation is the uncertainty, which is reflected in these surveys for all of us. This is why we try every single week to bring you the best data on the real estate market. Next slide, please. Now, let's look at the real estate data and market trends. As you know, we have the best data on the UAE real estate market trends, and we are now going to share this with you. We will also share new and more targeted data and make suggestions on what kind of actions to take because we want to help you manage your business well during this time as well as in the future. Next slide, please. The number of listings and listing views have increased in the last four to five weeks. Number of listings are up 4% for sales and up 7% for rental. Now, this is the number of listings. Now, listing views are up 17% for sales and 10% for rental. You will also see this trend in more detail in Alistair's presentation later in the webinar. Next slide, please. What we show you on this slide is a summary of sales leads for week 24 in 2020, compared to the same week last year. Similar to our last webinar, sales leads last week were above the same week last year across all unit types and across all Emirates. Dubai Apartments, which used to be the most impacted during the crisis, is now up by 5%. Dubai Villas are up by 1.4 times against the same week last year. Abu Dhabi Apartments are up by 50%. Abu Dhabi Villas are up by 1.2 times against the same week last year. Northern Emirates are up by about one time and Northern Emirate Villas are up by 2.6 times against the same week last year. 
We continue to see the pent up demand that we talked about in our very first few webinars starting in March. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now let's look at the same data for rental. Similar trends as for sales leads. Dubai apartments are up by 3%. Dubai villas are up by 81% against the same week last year. Abu Dhabi villas are up by 71%. Northern Emirates apartments are up by 46%. And Northern Emirates villas are up by 80%. One exception, Abu Dhabi apartments are down 11% compared to the same week last year. And as I've been saying every single webinar, needless to say, this is a great time to ramp up on your villa townhouse rental listings as people are clearly valuing personal outside space in their homes. Next slide, please. Now let's look at sales transactions. Remember our last webinar, we were right in the eye of the storm, which was 45 days, which is the average sales cycle, after the first lockdown measures. It was the lowest number of transactions in 2020. In the last two weeks, transactions are up again for both off-plan and secondary. The total number of transactions is now higher than the same period last year. You've heard a lot about V-shaped recovery theory. Two weeks is too short to take any conclusions. However, we have been seeing some very positive signs. Next slide, please. Now let's look at mortgage volume and value. If you look at the volumes of mortgage, which is a chart on top, this is another example of what could be a V-shaped recovery. Again, it's too soon to conclude anything, but mortgage volumes are back to 2019 levels, actually even higher. Mortgage value recovery is slower. For example, we are still below 2019 levels, but it has been increasing for the last two weeks. Ian for Mortgage Finder will provide, will provide more insights later in this webinar. Next slide, please. So let me summarize what I just said. Number of listing and listing views increased in the last four to five weeks. Sales and rental leads are up against last year for both apartments and villa townhouse across all Emirates and all unit types with the highest increase in leads for villas. Dubai Villas sales leads are 1.4 times higher. Rental leads are 81% higher. For Abu Dhabi Villas, sales leads are 1.2 times higher and rental leads are 71% higher. Northern Emir Villas sale leads 2.6 times higher and rental leads 80% higher. Sales transaction and mortgage volumes increased in the last two weeks and are back to 2019 levels. Now I would like to hand over to my colleague Stuart, who will speak to our next guest. Stuart? Thanks, Lynette. Um, so our next guest is uh, Alistair Sharice. Uh, Alex, Alistair is the VP of Growth and Marketing at Property Finder. Uh, he's got over 13 years of experience in digital marketing uh, and growth. And before joining Property Finder, he worked at Google. Um, so Alistair's going to today share some trends on the demand side from, from a PF point of view. Over to you, Alistair. Thanks, Stu, uh, and thanks for inviting me on. Um, if we go to the, to the next slide. Yeah, one more. Great. So uh, we're going to be looking at demand side uh, trends today. Um, there's been obviously a lot of upheaval over the last few months that's impacted all of our lives and all of our businesses. So we thought we'd take some time now that things are starting, I guess, to get back to a new normal to really analyse what the impact has been uh, to us as a business. And hopefully some of that reflects in what you've seen in your day to day work. Uh, and also to let you a little, know a little bit about what we did as a business to prepare for kind of when things started to come back to the, the, the new normal. So we're going to look closely at the consumer behavior over the, over the period of the crisis. Um, and we're going to look at how that impacted on the property finder traffic and the performance. And that's going to be from a fairly high level. Um, and then, I guess, more importantly, we're going to look at what we've seen since the lifting of restrictions over the last few weeks. And obviously... You know, it's fantastic news that the net kind of spoke about in terms of the last two weeks from a transactional point of view being higher than, than the same period of last year. Um, and yeah, as I say, just to go a little bit into what we did to be prepared to make sure that we could take advantage of as much as we could do and help our clients as much as possible uh, through this period and you know, uh, onwards through the rest of the year. Uh, okay, next slide. So, this is quite a busy graph, so let me just break it down for you so we can all understand it, okay? This is a, an actual screenshot from our Google Ads, so trying to be as transparent as possible and show you real kind of data out of our actual systems, okay? And what this graph is looking at is looking at the number of times a property finder ad appeared in search for uh, property-related searches. So this is when people search for rent apartment Dubai, villa for rent, villa for sale in Dubai, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, between January and now, there have been tens of thousands of unique queries. 
but they're all property related. Okay. And to be very clear, this does not include people that are searching for property finder. So it's only people that are searching for pure property related uh, uh, queries. Okay. The point of that little red line you can see on the top, that shows you for what percentage of those queries did we appear for. You can see that line is very consistent. So what that means is we appeared for 85% of tens of thousands of property-related search queries uh, from, from, from January to date, okay? And what the blue line shows you is how many ads we appeared for, so how many searches were performed by users. And what's really interesting about the line of this graph is how closely it maps to the announcement of the government uh, various initiatives. So you can see the first one there where the week that the schools were closed, which I think was the 8th of March, and you can see the drop immediately in terms of people searching for, for property related stuff. Consumers knew what was coming, we'd seen in other parts of the world lockdown had, had happened, and everyone knew that we were going to follow suit, and we saw that immediate dip of people searching for property related uh, uh, queries. Then, a couple of weeks later, the full sterilization program was, uh, was announced. Um, and the interesting thing we saw was actually was people started getting so it starts getting used to the new normal. We, we, we were expecting lockdown to come. Sterilization was announced and it dropped down even further as people were unsure of could they go and view properties? What was the legality of it? What were the health implications of it? Then interesting, we went into full lockdown. Things started to actually stabilize a little bit for a couple of weeks. And I think consumers really started to get used to what was going on. You know, it, was, it, was, it was a lot less scary because we'd kind of been in it for a, for, 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 for a few weeks uh, by that period. Okay. Now. The most exciting part is, of course, when lockdown started to get eased over, over Ramadan, and that spike is clear. So it was eased the week commencing of the 20th towards the end of that week, and you can see that huge spike over the next week in terms of property-related queries on, on, on Google. That little dip there was Eid, where we always see a drop in, uh, in, in people searching. People didn't go away this Eid, but people still spent time with their families, and it's just something that happens every single year uh, around Eid. And then, of course, then post Eid, we start to see you know, that phrase pent up the mark. And we really saw that. And you can see that absolute burst of, of, of intent of users searching for uh, property related uh, queries. Um, so that's the people that are searching for, I say, generic property related queries, no brand. But what I wanted to do was to try and validate that a bit more. So if we go on to the next slide, this is the same premise, but this is purely for people that are searching for property finder. Obviously, we've got incredible brand strength in the region. So when people want to find a home, they just go onto Google and they search property finder. So what would kind of really validate this idea that you know search demand and consumer behavior tracked against those government announcements would be to see what happened to people searching for property finder related keywords. And again, we can see a really similar pattern. So the sterilization program kicks in, we see a massive drop. Lockdown eases, we see a surge in people searching for our, our, our portal. Um, Eid, it drops back down, and then what we actually see is, is the highest amount of people searching for property finder in the history of our portal. So you can see that we've peaked above that, and that is the highest it's ever been for us as a, as a brand. So again, that's a true reflection of that pent-up demand, and also a true reflection of how we are synonymous in the, for, in the consumer's mind with, uh, with property. You'd also note as well that red line is slightly higher for property finder because we appear every single time somebody searches for a property finder uh, related uh, query. Um, but you know, showing you those two things, how does that then translate into overall search traffic? Because this is just how consumers are searching for property related keywords and searching for property finder as a brand. So if we go on to the uh, next slide, you can see that actually the same pattern is reflected in all of our site traffic. So this includes all of our social media activity, this includes organic traffic, this includes direct traffic, um, this includes absolutely everything. And again, it very, very clearly follows that pattern. Okay, traffic dropped off a cliff uh, the week the sterilization program was announced. We saw it kind of flatline over a few weeks as people got used to the new normal. And again, that surge as lockdown was eased. And then what we've done then as a brand and, and, and as a business is anticipating this pent up demand that we've been speaking about for, for webinar after webinar was to be ready for that and to take advantage of as much of that pent up demand for our clients as we possibly could. So that's why you see that pretty aggressive uh, spike as we went into June, because we started to read the data and we understood that consumers were you know, chomping at the bit to start viewing properties again, to start engaging with our clients again. So we prepared whilst times were kind of a little bit um, low, 
to make sure that when we thought the time was right, we could really go out there with as many new initiatives as possible to try and capture as much of that pent up demand uh, as possible. If we go on to the next one then. And then just to really kind of round the point home that this isn't just made up data, I thought I'd also just present it in a format that I think a lot of people in the industry are familiar with, which is similar web, um, which is a, a tool where uh, we kind of verified our analytics and it shows our traffic in, uh, in, in a third party uh, platform um, and is used, I think, by, by, by a lot of the portals in this region and, and a lot of you, our clients. And again, you can see exactly that same pattern with our traffic. OK, um, we had a little bit of a spike uh, through February and towards the end of February. Sterilization program kicked in. We saw a huge drop. Then it peaked down to the bottom a little bit. And then again, you can see that climb up uh, after lockdown was eased. OK, um, this graph is just up until the end of May, which is why you can't then see that spike uh, at the start of June. But again, Hopefully, this really clearly demonstrates you know, how closely consumer behavior and consumer demand tracked against those government announcements and, and, and how they reacted to that. Hopefully, that matches kind of with your experience in the industry. Um, but I guess the important part and the exciting part is what happens next, right? And what are we seeing right now? So if we go on to the next slide, please. Good. So the last couple of weeks have shown that release of that pent up demand. Okay, so what this shows is that red line is our overall site traffic, which again show, follows exactly the same pattern with that huge spike over the last couple of weeks. And what the bar chart shows is the total number of leads that we've uh, had on our website. Okay, and I think you can very clearly again see that pattern. Whilst people were still coming to our website, the drop in the number of people converting was even more dramatic than the people coming to our website. So people were still coming to our website because people still needed to move and do research. But they certainly weren't contacting you, our clients, because we were in lockdown, we couldn't go out, um, and, and, and the, the drop in leads is even more dramatic. But what's most exciting is that huge uh, release of that demand. And we've seen over the last two weeks, literally record breaking weeks uh, for the number of leads we have uh, on our website. Um, if you just click on, uh, yes. Thank you. So the last two weeks produced 11% more leads than the previous highest two weeks on the entire website, which actually were in February. So we are seeing the most amount of leads that we've ever had in the entire history of Property Finder. And again, if you kind of start to overlay that with what Lynette was talking to in terms of the last two weeks have seen the highest number of transactions, I guess, imagine the knock-on effect of all of that intent and, and all of that demand over the, over the coming weeks and the impact that's going to have on transactions as well. So, you know, the question is, are you ready for it? How can we help you get ready for it? Because um, we're going to continue capturing as much of that demand uh, as we possibly can. Next one. And just to kind of really talk about what we've done over the last kind of month or so, this graph shows the last 28 days of traffic uh, to uh, Property Finder. And I just want to talk briefly about what that, that spike is. Again, we knew that pent up demand would, would be released. We knew that post Eid especially, we would see a huge uh, impact on the number of people coming to our uh, coming to our portal and, and converting. So for the couple of weeks before that, we were tinkering, we were testing with a few different channels, with a few different advertising formats. And what we did was for that first week, when we thought pent up demand was there, we went a bit crazy and we were testing dozens of different uh, uh, channels, different things to work out which one of those channels would capture all that demand and drive the most effective, most engaged traffic through to our listings pages and then on to you, uh, our clients. And then what you do is you see that line start to kind of trickle down a little bit as we calm down a little bit. We understand what works, what doesn't. Um, and, and what you then end up with is the fact that our kind of our base rate, our daily traffic is now significantly higher than it was uh, uh, previously. And again, we are hitting over the last two weeks record breaking amounts of traffic um, with us engaging consumers on the most channels we ever have done before uh, as a business. Um, next one, please. So the last couple of slides, I just want to really talk about what has enabled us as, as your partner to take advantage of all of this uh, pent up demand uh, that's, uh, that's been released. And there are three core areas that I'm going to focus in. One is something that we've spoken about before as a business and we're incredibly proud of. And that's our kind of absolute dominance when it comes to high intent property related search queries from an SEO point of view. OK, so this is a pie chart that kind of takes the, the, the leaders of the, uh, the real estate world in, in, in the UAE. It takes the top 500 property related queries. Again, it doesn't include brand names like Property Finder. Um, and then it looks at kind of 
what share of voice, so what percentage of the traffic does each of those brands capture? Okay. In very simple terms, if you rank number one in, in Google for a majority of these uh, brand terms, you're going to get more clicks, more traffic to your website, more high intent users engaging with, uh, with our clients. And what we can see is this was taken from uh, last week, is that we've consistently been at about 50% out of those top four portals. So that means we're capturing approximately 50% of all of the search traffic are from organic Google for those top 500 uh, keywords. And again, that's by virtue of the fact that we appear in position one for a vast majority of those search queries. So that's number one, why we've been able to capture so much demand. We've got a great digital marketing setup. But that organic setup means that when people are going on to Google, making those searches, we're always making sure that we, and therefore our clients, are gonna be the first thing that a consumer clicks on. Uh, next one, please. The second one was our is our brand strength in the region. Look, we've been a we've been around for a while now. Um, we've consistently invested our brand, and we consistently invest in a diversified marketing approach and engaging consumers in what's important to them, or at least that's what we try and strive to do every single day. We don't always get it right, of course. Um, and what this bar chart is showing you is the direct traffic to our website. So that's people that have been to us before and they start typing it straight into the browser bar and they come directly to our website. And of course, direct traffic is a really good proxy for brand strength because the more people know of you, the more likely they are to come directly to your website rather than typing in rent apartment Dubai and then browsing through and clicking on. People that come directly to our website have already made that choice that Property Finder is the portal that I want to use for various reasons and I'm gonna go directly to it. Um, and again, what you can see, which is incredible, is like, since that pens up demand has come, our direct traffic has, has scaled alongside it. So not only have we always been a strong brand, actually post uh, COVID, and I would like to think through initiatives like live viewings that you know, our amazing product team turned around in a matter of weeks and started to engage consumers with massively. The combination of all the brand advertising we're doing and the SEO dominance, more and more consumers are turning to Property Finder as their portal of choice. And again, the last few weeks have seen the highest amount of people coming direct to our portal than ever before. Um, so brand strength, which has resulted in great direct traffic, the second reason why we've been able to really take advantage of this pent up demand. Uh, third, please, next one. And finally, the third thing that's really helped us over this period was we made the decision to migrate the justproperty.com uh, domain to Property Finder. It's obviously no secret that we've been partners for, 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 for a year or so, and we finally made the decision to roll up just property into the property finder domain uh, officially. And that's something we worked on over that kind of down period when potentially you know, the leads and stuff weren't coming through as much as possible. And again, the reason being was that rolling that into our one property, we could be laser focused uh, from a marketing point of view and from a consumer behavior point of view, just on the property finder portal. And it would also strengthen our SEO, uh, make it even stronger than it, than it already is. So we made that decision that look, by doing this, it's going to not only uh, make uh, more sense and do more for our clients, it's actually going to make more sense for consumers because it means they kind of got less options to go to. We're essentially the same business. So let's put all of our focus into that property finder domain. Um, and that's been a huge uh, boon for us. And it's kind of really helped drive that pent up uh, demand as well. Final slide, please. So takeaways that I'd like to leave you with. Um, as I think I demonstrated, because I, I tried to do it in about five different ways, that user demand really closely tracked the, the actions that the government were taking. Um, uh, users got used to a new normal, so there was that kind of that period, um, maybe two, three weeks, even during lockdown, where traffic at least was very stable. And that's something we're certainly going to take away and learn for anything that comes in the future, that how quick and how resilient consumers are to get used to new circumstances and how can we learn from that and do more from that. Um, that first slide and the second slide, I hope demonstrated that as, a, as your partner, we captured as much of that demand during that period as we possibly could. We didn't underinvest, we didn't switch off, we continued to capture as much of the relevant demand that was out there in the market as we possibly could to try and drive as much as we could through that period. Um, the absolute kind of dam bursting of lockdown being lifted um, has kind of driven that pent up demand and is, is super exciting for us and of course, for you to see how long that continues and what the long-term impact on transactions is going to be uh, from that. Um, and as we track that pent-up demand and, and, and we kind of you know, spent so much time looking at every little nuance of our website and what consumers are doing, all of the insights that have been delivered to 
to you over the last few webinars, we were also at the same time making preparations for when life started to go back to normal to ensure that we could capture as much demand and make sure that we could drive as much of that through to our partners as was humanly possible. And just to really kind of double down and highlight that you know, that SEO strength and that brand strength that we have in the market, alongside the world-class marketing function that we have, have really enabled us to capture that demand and will you know, onwards enable us to continue to capture that demand uh, on behalf of, of our partners. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Really great presentation, some really great uh, insights into data there. And, and thanks from us for being so on top of the consumer behaviour, which is absolutely vital to our customers and our clients at this, uh, this moment in time. Um, Alistair's going to be joining us again at the end for a Q&A, so if you've got any further questions, please feel free to stick around and ask them. Um, if we can move on to our next slide, I'm now going to introduce our next guest today. Uh, our next guest is Ian Vaughan. He is the Senior Mortgage Consultant for Mortgage Finder. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Ian. Yeah. Hi, Ian. Uh, so we've got three questions for you today, uh, and then I know you're going to again be sticking around for the Q&A at the end as well. Um, so I'm going to start with the first qu uh, question, which is, uh, have you seen the mortgage and property market change at all post-lockdown? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, I have, Stuart. I have indeed. Now, we've heard uh, Lynette and Alistair talk about uh, the um, pent-up demand, and we've seen that translated in Mortgage Finder to the number of inquiries that we have received recently, and also uh, that has been translated into the number of transactions and mortgage volumes as well. As an example, in March, we received approximately 988 leads and 49 million dealings worth of submissions to our panel banks. In May, that spiked to about 1,600 leads and 124 million dealings worth of submissions. And already in June, uh, we've received uh, 900 leads from uh, a cross-section of our respective websites and from our real estate agent referrers as well, and already uh, 60 million deals worth of submissions. Now, I think that the vast proportion of the inquiries that we have received have come from first-time buyers who recognise that now may well be a very good time to be purchasing. That's probably due to the fact that the down payment has been reduced from 25% to 20%. There are also a lot of good products available from the banks as well, with very low interest rates, with zero bank processing fees, reductions in valuation fees as well. Um, now, one of the negatives that I have seen really um, during COVID is with the restrictions that the banks are implementing in terms of uh, their lending structure to, uh, to uh, individuals. They're restricting the, the sectors and also they are undertaking more stringent checks with their underwriting and credit reviews. So, I mean, those would be, in summary, there would be a tighter underwriting procedures with the banks, but the, the positives would be that there is a, um, there are lots of good products out there with low interest rates and also the, uh, the down payment has been reduced as well. Personally, in 18 years of being a mortgage advisor, six of them here in the UAE, I have never, ever been as busy as I am now. Good to hear, good to hear, Erin. Um, second question, uh, with the number of projects being handed over currently in the market, what are the key aspects of a handover payment to a developer? Uh, sorry, the questions have just closed. Uh, where a finance buyer is, <coughs> is concerned? Well, it's quite a uh, complex uh, matter, really, and I'll try and praise it as best I can in the, in the time that we have left. And most banks uh, who offer finance would require a title deed to be already in place because that gives them that uh, comfort and knowledge of knowing that they, uh, they, they are protected. There are a limited number of banks that would be prepared to make a transfer of a property uh, on an accrued only basis where there's no title deed in place. Now, previously as well, these banks were quite relaxed in terms of a project being listed, but now 
they would all require a project to be listed, regardless of whether it's with the likes of EMA or uh, Dubai Properties, DMAC, the project itself has to be listed with them. Now, one uh, type of transaction that's become prevalent quite recently, I suppose, is with the, the market as it is now, um, is where there is a tri-party purchase and sale. And what I mean, mean by that is where there is an original buyer that signed the SPA with the developer, who now has a handover payment to be made, but is unable to complete on that handover payment because of personal uh, situations. Where there then becomes the third party buyer who requires a payment to be made to the developer and uh, a payment to be made to the seller as well. This is where it becomes really restrictive in, in terms of the banks that would be prepared to lend on this basis. And a key example of that uh, happened to me recently where a real estate agent referred a client to me who is a, an employee of HSBC. HSBC would have been prepared to have made the final payment to the developer on her behalf had she signed the SPA directly with them, but they were unable to make the final payment to the developer and that residual payment to the seller as well. So it's all about finding the correct bank to facilitate this type of transaction for the client. Okay, thank, thanks Ian. Uh, one final question before I, I uh, hand back to Lynette um, to wrap up. What are the uh, mortgage options for non-residents in Dubai? Well again, this has been a uh, restricted sector with a, a very limited number of banks that uh, are prepared to lend to non-residents. This has been further restricted with a number of withdrawals from this sector recently by the likes of HSBC, RAC Bank and ADIB. Uh, and as another example with uh, RAC Bank, when they used to lend, they would be prepared to lend at 75% LTV. Uh, but with their withdrawal from the market, uh, currently the maximum loan to value would be between 50 and 60%, with the potential with one of the banks to go to 65% LTV, depending upon client profile. Now, again, there is closer scrutiny uh, with these types of banks uh, in terms of the client's profile before they would be prepared to lend. There is one bank that would go to 50% LTV on a low document basis where the only requirements really would be a copy of a passport, last three months bank statements and uh, proof of employment or self-employment. But I think the key factor is at the moment is the inability of overseas clients to complete on the transaction. It's pretty simple to get from a pre-approval stage to get the valuation organized, the report to be received, and also for the bank to issue the final offer of mortgage letter. But this is where the process then stops because of the, the travel restrictions and because the banks here require a client to be physically in Dubai because of compliance restrictions to be able to open up a bank account. Even banks that do have branches in London, as an example, would not allow a client to walk into that branch to open up a UAE bank account. They do require physical presence here in the UAE to open the bank account. So that's where the, this type of process uh, comes to an end at the moment. I do see some light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously, travel restrictions are becoming a, a little bit less restricted, which means clients hopefully will be able to, to come into Dubai. We do have a, a new bank that is becoming empaneled with us as well, who will be prepared to lend to 75% LTV. But again, that's slightly restricted to Saudi Arabian nationals and also to expats residing in uh, Saudi Arabia as well. There certainly is uh, some, some light in, at the end of the tunnel and hopefully the likes of HSBC as an example will hopefully come back into the market in, uh, in due course. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for answering the questions, Ian. Uh, you can actually stay on, on camera and stick around with us now because I'm going to hand back to uh, Lynette for the uh, Q&A. Over to you, Lynette. 
Thanks, Stuart. Okay, guys, it's time for Q&A. Um, we're very conscious that it's already past 12. Um, and we have a lot of questions, so we're only going to be able to get to a few of them um, because obviously we don't want to continue to run over time. Um, so Dr. Waters, Alistair, if you can please come back. Um, we have a few questions for you. Um, first one is to Alistair. First of all, Alistair, I loved your presentation. I love the data. Um, for everyone who's on this webinar, we're offering Data Finder for free to all of our clients. All of this data is in Data Finder. So if you want to know where people are searching for, where people are sending leads for, where transactions are happening, what the average prices are, you want to see the Mawasher Index, everything is in Data Finder. So please, if you don't have access to Data Finder, please contact your account manager to get your free access. Okay, sorry, Alistair. Uh, first one, um, is this for searches on rental properties or properties for sale, assuming rental searches primary, uh, primarily, so I guess more? Yes, so it includes all property related uh, uh, queries. Of course, just given the market we're in, there are more rental searches than there are people searching for properties uh, for sale. But it also includes kind of slightly higher level searches. So somebody searching Dubai Silicon Oasis, for example. Um, so uh, as I said, it includes, you know, I think since January, we've appeared for maybe you know, tens of thousands of unique property related searches. So it's absolutely everything, but obviously a majority of, of that traffic comes from rent apartments Dubai, by Villa Dubai, um, you know, uh, uh, rent apartment Dubai Marina, uh, and, and all those kinds of queries. So um, we're gonna have to stop here. Um, I'm going to bullet point my conclusion. Um, we know that your time is important, therefore we have changed the webinars to be in a bi-weekly format. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Waters, Alistair, and Ian for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we have the best data in the UAE real estate market, and everything is available on the Data Finder platform. Um, if you don't have access to it, please uh, contact your account managers. We are giving free access to Data Finder to all of our clients. Um, we also publish these webinars on our hub, so propertyfinder.ae slash hub, if you want other people in your company to see these insights. Um, and as always, we want to be your best partner during this time and also in the future. Um, we will ask you for your feedback by email in a few minutes. This is so we can make this webinar even better next time. So please answer our survey and we promise we'll try even harder to be your best partner. Stay safe and see you in two weeks. Bye.